on there folks earthmaster here on this uh sunday evening november 8th 2020 about 7 22 p.m west coast time here going to do a quick update recap of activity around the globe today not uh, going to extensively get into any details too much uh pretty tired only got a couple hours of sleep after working all night last night so gonna call it uh pretty early bedtime i believe right nothing wrong with a early bedtime on a cold night Here's the uh, earthquake that struck out here along the east coast over here around the uh, Bliss Corner area. This was originally a 4.2 that came in through the USGS, downgraded to a 4.0, and then ultimately down to a 3.6. So almost a complete full magnitude of downgrading uh, there from the USGS. Also, the depth of the earthquake raised up a little bit, but no doubt quite a few folks reported feeling it. I appreciate all your comments on the last video about the uh, experience that you felt there. 834, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, there, that's a lot of reports out here, folks, um, for this type of earthquake here. Even, you know, 3.6 um, being fairly shallow out there. No doubt uh, quite a few folks reported feeling that earthquake. Uh, checking out the waveforms real quick. Let's see if I can find those. Uh, uh, let me look here. I'm, I'm pretty tired. I'll tell you what. Let me see here. Today, uh, USGS, yeah, sometimes they, if there's a significant earthquake, they will report a summary at uh, the bottom of this page here, but no, no specific uh, uh, summary on that one there. Looking at historical earthquake activity, I'm sure there's... Uh, no doubt quakes out there, but uh, at least according on this map here, they don't have a lot of uh, quakes here in that region. Some up here to the northwest, uh, up above the uh, New York area, but uh, around this region looking uh, pretty, um, fairly quiet, I would say. Uh, I got to get through this before I fall asleep. I'm not even joking. I am just completely drained and fatigued. Uh, let's see here the all magnitudes over here around the northern california area pretty quiet still out here folks as far as uh you know a major plate boundary between north american pacific plate relatively quiet some microquakes of course down there in southern cal but even that activity is diminishing uh, what is not diminishing well let's check this out here real quick around mount st helens still see some activity around the volcanic uh regions of washington and uh, looks like Mount Rainier, up, Mount Rainier up here showing a little bit of activity as well. No new activity really to report there in Northern Cal. Uh, a couple, well, a, I'll, I'll take that back there. At least as far as the west co or the uh, northern coast over there goes. But here around Mount Lassen area, pretty good increase in um, earthquake activity as well. 3.0, or not 3.0, but uh, about 3 kilometers below the surface, some significant uh, microquakes going on around Mount Lassen. Kind of concerning because this is not just the first time that we've seen activity. We can go back the, uh, well, let's go back the last 30 days, all magnitudes here. <clears throat> Take a look at the region here. Zooming in, about 46 earthquakes around the Mount Lassen area. Most of them specifically confined around the summit area of Mount Lassen. Of course, the newer earthquake activity here in the orange, yellow, um, yellow within the past week and then uh, white indicating within the past month there according to the scale no major you know as far as like magnitude goes folks there's not a whole lot of um, uh, what's the word i'm looking for here there's not a whole lot of uh energy being released down there these are just microquakes that are popping off uh, but it's still interesting to watch considering it is a volcano an active volcano there and uh fairly close to my home location here so keep an eye on this pretty closely i do believe this is playing a part uh, with what's going on there in the pacific northwest with the large trimmer amounts that are going on there this here is the uh, pnsn dot uh, board network you can see the a massive amount of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone there, all the way from Northern California and the parts of the Sacramento Valley here, which extends uh, um, 
um, just north of Sacramento, all the way up to almost Vancouver Island. The only thing we haven't really seen is an extensive amount of uh, trimmer along this area right here where we sometimes do. But uh, that's definitely uh, some large scale movement along the Cascadia. This is uh, 5,468 epicenters. List not generated for more than 5,000 epicenters, according to these folks. So, according, uh, there, there could be a, a lot, a lot more. But I do have this set from November 1st to the uh, date today. Well, it covers today. It says the 9th there, but uh, this activity covers the uh, activity that took place today. So large scale movement, folks. I mean, a lot of folks wonder what's going on with this. You know, does that mean we're having a big earthquake along the Cascadia? Well, look at that tremor there in, in Northern Cal. That's just, I mean, that's spectacular when it comes to the amount of uh, tremor. Also up there in Washington, an extreme amount of tremor being reported downstream of the Cascadia subduction zone. A little article off of the uh, seattletimes.com website. Uh, Oh man, you guys better not throw ads at me. It looks like they they might. Um, anyway, here's a little a little view of the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. There, it's here. Oh, it's kind of an odd slice of land here. But you got Seattle, uh, Olympia, Tacoma um, in this area. Juan de Fuca Plate sits off to the. Uh, the west over here subducts underneath the North American plate. That's why we got a, a line down here to the red indicating subduction underneath that North American plate. Uh, this is the area right here where we get uh, it gets slippery, right? We call this a slow slip event trimmers. Uh, and this is the zone right here that takes place here in this region. Sometimes we see it up here a little bit shallower towards about 10 kilometers below the surface. Most of us, most of the trimmer occurring roughly between 30 and 40 kilometers downstream of the uh, Cascadia locked section. The locked section sits up here, extends somewhat over the land, uh, but uh, starts out there along the Pacific, or out there in the Pacific, I should say, where that red uh, cold front looking thing, well, that'd be a warm front in weather terms, but with these spikes on it uh, indicating the locked section. Um, so these folks here mention that uh, you know there's a lot of seismologists and, and geologists and whatnot stating that uh, it's very possible, uh, if not likely, that when we have the next very big earthquake on the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, it will happen when one of these slow slip events are occurring <clears throat> and I've always said that uh, you know that's an extreme uh, possibility right because you got to think about it what's causing all the trimmer downstream there pressure increase in pressure along the North American the Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate that sits over there to the west of that Let's see, where was that little thing here? So they mentioned here, while the slow slip event relieves strain deep on the fault, it adds a little more pressure to the shallow portion called the lock zone. I mean, yes, we do get earthquakes and sometimes larger ones downstream, but they're so far down there that they don't create uh, uh, any type of major damage at the surface there. We're talking about six to 7.0 magnitudes at times downstream on occasion throughout history but the area over here to the west the lock section here is uh, very capable of producing a 9.0 or greater magnitude a mega quake and that would create a huge tsunami that would uh, definitely cause an extensive amount of damage and um, it would not be good for the uh, entire coast there of Washington Oregon and parts of Northern California uh, but then also that tsunami would race across the Pacific, hit Hawaii and also Japan, Alaska as well. It's not a good scenario if we have a mega quake out there. But, uh, you know, 
they talk about uh, the pressure being built up every time we see these events. We've been seeing them quite a bit all last month and this month as this month as well. I mean, look at this. Just since the first, folks. There's more. There's way more than this. But according to these guys, you know, it's not generated for more than 5,000 epicenters. So just today, let's go ahead and go to today's um, Sunday. There we go. Let me click that real quick. Uh, let's see if I can think here. I'm just, I, man, I tell you what. No sleep is no good. Let me tell you. But then again, no money for the bills is no good also. There is the uh, trimmer, 728 epicenters of trimmer just today. Okay, you've seen the 5,000 number over the last week. Activity still ramping up in Northern Cal, Central Oregon, and also up there in Washington big time. This is definitely a major event. And we just got through having another major event. So with all that being said, folks, it's good to be on guard. Pacific Northwest, uh, here in, in Northern California where I live, and just be on guard. Um, you know, the percentages are higher when we see this tremor event take place uh, for a major earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone. <clears throat> Getting back to the surface quakes, like I said, we're seeing the activity in the volcanoes right now. I don't believe it's magma related, related but it's an obvious sign of pressure built up, potentially. Um, just below the surface there you can see three kilometers or so below the surface there at Mount uh, Lassen there in Northern Cal pretty much the same up here <clears throat> at uh, Mount St. Helens there uh, that one click on that real quick oh that one's a little bit more shallower that's pretty uh pretty close to the surface there at Mount St. Helens right smack dab there once again in the uh, in the summit but I think also you know, while while I say this may not be volcanic related and it's occurring at a volcano, it may not technically be magma related or any type of uh, magma intrusion below the surface. This could be, uh, you know, potentially lava tubes, old lava tubes, weak parts down there uh, below the volcano that's um, crumbling, I guess is a word, or uh, shifting due to the pressure and whatnot uh, going on well below, right? The the uh, surface there with the slow slip and also the gen generalized pressure there along the North American plate uh, with the Juan de Fuca plate and the Pacific plate there, man. It's it's a it's a it's, it's a hot spot of activity right now. Mount Rainier here, you can see some shallow quakes as well. This negative 0.4, negative 2.5 kilometers, just um, odd. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say not for sure what the USGS is thinking about that but uh, just some odd activity so we're not seeing a whole lot of surface quaking right now folks but down below okay don't let all this quiet activity fool you there's some major movement going on along the Cascadia mega thrust slip area Northern California up here past Seattle up here around Victoria is where we're seeing all the action we could potentially see it a little bit further up, but we're just not seeing that right now. So, um, but it's uh, it's still kind of sketchy. You know, it's something we need to watch out there for sure. Who knows how much pressure needs to build up before this thing blows, before it pops? You know, the 9.0 earthquake. It's gonna knock the stream, this stream, and channel off the air. For sure, uh, here where I live. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't happen. But look, I mean, it's uh, the microquakes are definitely popping off there in Southern Cal, uh, extending into portions of Central and Northern California, but uh, not a whole lot aside from volcanic act, volcanic quakes up there um, throughout Washington. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to start to see pretty soon at least at least one moderate size quake, if not bigger, along the Cascadia subduction zone out here, possibly around the Gorda Escarpment region, um, you know, even over here towards the Blanco Fracture zone. 
but I expect this to definitely uh, release somewhat uh, pressure. If not, uh, that's just it's just going to make the big one bigger, bigger, bigger and bigger. That's for sure. Definitely uh, building up some pressure, no doubt. Last last mega quake out here along the Cascadia was uh, 1700. You know, a lot of folks know that. A lot of folks don't. So I try to mention it uh, on occasion. It's been over 300 years of pressure building up out here along the Cascadia Mega Thrust area, and it's uh, it's coming. Let me tell you, it's coming, folks. All right, what else we got? I'm pretty tired. There's some quakes going on there in Yellowstone National Park over there. That uh, well, pretty. I I'd say the. The entire west side over here picked up all these little quakes. It almost looked like there was a swarm going on there. Uh, a potential start of a swarm. Uh, but it quickly died out. There you can see about 10, well, about 10 earthquakes here in this region. Um, not, nothing from the USGS. They're not reporting anything. When you go over here and look at the uh, um, all magnitudes, they are not reporting a single peep of an earthquake. Not a not even any microquakes, but definitely hours ago, almost 24 hours ago, we've seen some good, good uh, swarming going on for a small period of time, and that showed up, like I said, on uh, quite a few, quite a few stations there across the uh, Yellowstone National Park region. Oh, let's see, folks. What else we got? My pillow, uh, my electric blanket, my fan. Yes, I think it's time. All right, folks, I'm out of here. I got to get some sleep. I'll be better tomorrow, I hope. Have a good day or night. I'm so confused on my nights and days. You know, when you work, when you work a uh, night shift uh, for 12 hours, you know, it's uh, it does some wonders on your brain. I'm talking about hallucinations and some weird stuff. But uh, I'll be alright. <laughs> Have a good day, fo night, folks. We'll chat to you guys a little bit later. Uh, please stay safe.